Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today. Welcome back to Winfield Sue. Uh, in the last episode, we talked about our hoofstock, but we started this uh, Japanese macaque habitat. So that's what we'll be continuing today. But before we get to that, I'm actually gonna pause it because I wanna make sure bad things don't happen while we're talking. Uh, you guys gave me some suggestions on the hoofstock and many of you guys said that moving the follow deer over here and then combining this over here to get more than just one moose is a great idea. So that's what I think we're going to do to start off here. I'm going to start by putting everybody in the trade center. I'm not going to trade them out of the zoo just yet because my thought is maybe somewhere down the line it's not like Winfield Zoo only has to have hoofstock in this one particular area so there is a potential that down the line we add these guys back somewhere where they can be far away from guests and maybe not get so stressed I don't know I don't know if that's possible that is a lot of poop in your sleeping area my goodness um, but we'll move the follow deer over here and then open that up for the moose to have a little bit more space now i think that is everyone in there let's see am i able to click on the door this is the one problem with sinking habitats aha into the doors or into the walls like that yeah okay so no more animals great habitat is empty and we should it should just be set up to just kind of move these guys over here um because they're still hoofstock, so they should have everything that they need if we just kind of place them over here. But that also brings me to my very first, uh, or not announcement, but um, our little alerts here. Our follow deer died. Our male leucistic follow deer. The one that we got like episode, what, like two or something like that? And then we have a reindeer that has died, which is very sad as well. This is our, this is our female reindeer actually. And let me double check while we're over here. I think that means we only have, yeah, we have reindeer 5B2 and <laughs> their offspring. So what I think I might do is I think I might retire this guy just because he's 16.6 years old um and so let's go ahead and I, not that this wouldn't really necessarily be realistic we wouldn't be releasing that old of an animal into the wild but that's okay we're gonna you know he got rehomed he went to a sanctuary something like that and then we have our male here so let's get a uh female reindeer that will be his buddy when he grows up. So if we go to rain deer and see about getting a female one. Um, okay, well, they're all female except for this one. So that's good. Who's the youngest one? They're all like 6.6.1 years is going to be the youngest one. So sure, let's go ahead and get you. You look good enough. Go to our storage and get us our female named Emma. Go ahead and send you into the zoo. Perfect, let's get out of this, hit play. And then over here, we need to double check because I'm pretty sure our white male deer was our only male deer. So he should be the dad's to everyone, meaning that if we get, uh, yes, if we get another male he should be good to breed with everyone um so let's see we have one two three let me do it this way that way i don't have to worry okay so one two three four five we do have a male baby but he is going to be related clearly to his mother and everything so we're gonna put him on contraceptives these guys off of contraceptives and then we're gonna get ourselves a new male follow deer so we go back to here we go to fall hello we go to follow deer perfect Male. Male, male, male. Well, you're really inexpensive. Why are you so inexpensive? So there's that one. Uh, should we replace it with another leucistic one? 
because you're only 500 and I kind of really want a chance at leucistic baby. So, okay, sure. Did we get it? Yes, we did. Put you back in here. I didn't even see the name though. What was the name of that one? Well, I guess we'll, we'll hit play and we'll wait for it to be brought to the habitat. So yeah, so that should solve that problem. Ooh, we got a little gift. What did we get? Aha, released to the wild. We got $500, perfect. And here, here is our new guy. What is your name? Uh, 92.100. We're gonna need to change that. <laughs> We're gonna need to, that's not a name. I'm gonna name you Snow for now. I know that's super original and very boring, but that's gonna be the name for now. Oh, and I don't even know why I put you in this habitat. We're moving you guys anyway. So let's go ahead and move everyone to over here to their new little home. I guess I could have done that originally, like I said. They'll have a lot more space. Um, so meaning we'll be able to have a lot more babies and everything and they'll be able to be happy and all that kind of stuff over here. And then our moose will get a lot more room and we can get a female to go with our male and then hopefully have babies. Was that everybody? Did I get everybody? Oh no, one more in here. I know there's an easier way to do this, but this is how I'm gonna do it for now because I'm already done. All right, so play, you guys, uh, the caretakers have to come get them, is that right? Or the vets, vets and or caretakers. Let me just make sure I got everybody. One, two, somebody should be coming for this one as well. Uh, yeah, great, so that should be everybody. Let's make sure they're nice and happy over here with all their space requirements and everything. Uh, they need a little bit more short grass, but is everything else happy on habitat? No, social, yeah, space is at 100%. Hard shelter should be, 80% uh, is fine. So they need more short grass. That is a tiny little applicator there. Let's actually make it not so big. Um, and they need less soil. So we wanna put grass where there's soil around here. Make it look a little pretty. I kinda, kinda don't like how much grass they like because <laughs> I like the soil look. Is this? Yeah, that's short grass. Okay, great. So we'll do this around this side. Oh, gosh, more, even more. There we go, perfect. So that is their new habitat and they're all, they're all happy. Woohoo, okay. Let's see, uh, low welfare, why? Um, space, critical area crowding. Are you stuck because Oh yeah, you're totally stuck. Why is this a thing? Why, why is this a thing? Should we move this a little forward maybe? Maybe that's a problem? Don't know why it would be. They can tell, it's probably the grass to be honest. Um, let's see if this works, hit play. You should be able, there we go. Okay, great. And I know your social group is not that great, but it's because your your boyfriend or girlfriend, I forget which one it was, has not grown up yet. So you just need to be patient. Uh, oh God, protesters already? Jeez, what is your problem? Um, stress, well, go inside your house, please. We gave you these little walls to kind of help. Maybe we should extend Maybe we should extend this wall too and just make this whole side not a viewable thing. If we do this and we just bring, actually, let's just do it this way. Hello, can I have this wall? Thank you. Just like we did with the other one, we'll bring it all the way up to here like that. And then hopefully they won't view through there. So if we let it play, hopefully these guys should go away. Go away, there's nothing to see. You cannot see through this wall, thank you. Uh, many guests think tickets are underpriced. Okay, well, we can change that. Let's not have it so speedy. That's probably why I miss things. Let's up it to 25 and see if that makes them happy. Because these guests are all about paying a fair price. And then educational item. Oh, I didn't fix these ones. That's right. We should do that. Uh, let's do none. And I think there's one more, right? Yeah, none. 
and then we need to fix the other one because we no longer have the pronghorn or the bison. So we'll go over here and we'll change these all to follow deer like that. And there's two over here, which we can probably get rid of one. So I'll get rid of this one and we'll do follow deer right here. Perfect. Okay, cool. So what I want to do now is I want to jump into, well, actually, hold on. Before we do that, vet research. Hello? Uh-oh, we've frozen. There we go. <sighs> Mini heart attack. Uh, vet, vet research is completed on all four of these guys. That's fantastic. Did we... Hello? Goodness, this is making me nervous. I want to jump into the time lapse before we freeze and crash. Uh, okay, we fixed that, so hopefully that'll go away. Um, did we assign somebody to the Japanese macaques? I don't think we did. We did not. So let's actually take you, oops, let's take you off of that and off of that. Since we don't have those guys in the park anymore, we'll put you on that. We'll put you on the Arctic Fox and then we'll put you on the macaques. And then we need to do the moose, uh, the, sorry, the moose and the cougar as well. Um... So maybe once this one's finished up, we'll move them over to the cougar. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so what I wanna do, uh, it's all cloudy and it's gonna rain. So I'm gonna sit here and wait until it's done raining and then we will jump into the time-lapse. So I'll see you in just a second. Bad decisions were made. Bad decisions were made and now we have to live with them. <laughs> so I am, I'm pretty happy with how this uh, time lapse comes out or this build comes out. But when I say bad decisions were made, I mean that when you are building a circular habitat, do not, do not follow what I did and always build the roof alongside the walls. That way you can rotate everything together and it's all nice and symmetrical and it's easy and it doesn't take you hours and frustration and that is the moral of the story. Just don't do what I do. Learn learn from my mistakes. Learn from my suffering. So before we actually get to that part of the build, we are actually doing uh, something uncharacteristic of myself and we are doing a mini backstage little area inside this building. So I mentioned it after the time lapse is over, but you guys had a wonderful idea. Um, and by you guys, I mean a couple people in the comments below said, why don't you open up the inside of the building that you're going to make and make it a shelter area for the monkeys. And that way they can go in there, they can get their hard shelter requirement. They can go in there and get some sleep and rest and be sheltered from the weather. Um, and also it will add a little bit more space to the habitat overall. And that's exactly what we're doing. So back here, I am starting to frame off just very simple. And when I say, you know, we're doing it in, in interior, we are, but it is the simplest of simple interiors. It is by no means super detailed out. This is probably the one and only time we're going to look at uh, the interior of this build in this time lapse here in a little bit afterwards. But after that, probably never going to zoom back down in here and look at it again. So it it um, serves a function, right? It does what it needs to do. It provides the monkeys a hard shelter. I put some bedding in there so they know that's where they're supposed to sleep. Um, and it also does extend the um, habitat space by quite a bit so that they are nice and happy and have enough space to run around. But basically, it's just a couple little climbing structures in here and, uh, and a sleeping area. So I end up trying to make it look pretty. My thought was this is a pretty simple habitat in terms of being able to put it up on the workshop for you guys and that there's really no um, terrain elevation or any crazy things like that. And so I can pretty much when it's all done since it's primarily built of just building pieces, I can get it up there for you guys. And so I did kind of finish off the inside uh, to an extent just to make it easy. So if you want to further and go do an interior and, and be crazy and... <laughs> deal with working inside the building, you are more than welcome to. It's not up there yet because the habitat isn't finished. And um, I honestly, I don't know. I don't know when we're going to finish the habitat because what I was talking about in the beginning about moving on and doing the roof to the actual outside part of the habitat. 
<sighs> this time lapse, it's only what, like eight minutes long or so in the episode. It was a little over an hour. Um, a little over an hour in real time and I normally only build for maybe an hour or so in the franchise episodes anyway but I normally get like habitats fully done and decorated and all that kind of stuff and this one I just I should have done I should have done the roof with the circular symmetry when I did the walls and so I may I may potentially end up um kind of redoing it all together. In fact, now that I think about it after the fact, um, I think that's what I will do. Maybe in between episodes or maybe on a stream sometime, um, we'll just, we'll create the roof all together now that I kind of know what I want to create. Um, because it just, it's, it, it looks okay, don't get me wrong, but in order to finish it, because we don't actually finish it in this time lapse, in order to finish it, it would take a while of a lot of little meticulous piece placing, and it's not going to look exactly how I want it to. Um, but in this episode, I was really trying to remember what I always try to remember myself is uh, done is better than perfect, um, so not to stress out about the teeny tiny details too much, um, because we do, I mean, all things considered we do get a lot done in this time lapse the monkeys are happy we extended their habitat we have a uh, backstage I mean the fact that I did an interior I pats on my back for that because I uh <laughs> I don't like interiors so anyway that being said I hope you guys do enjoy this little habitat um I do want to work on it going forward but it probably won't be for a couple episodes because about two episodes for one habitat is as much as I really want to spend on one habitat um and then move on and add a another animal. I'm actually getting uh, very inspired to build in Planet Zoo again, and I haven't been in a little while. However, I'm really enjoying building like one-off habitats. Um, so you might have seen like the lion habitat that I put up recently, which went along with the restaurant speed build that went up before that. And that's kind of what I'm really um, inspired to build right now that aren't in any particular zoo or certain project, just kind of one-off things. As we're in this time waiting for the next DLC. That's kind of what I feel like uh, building. So may potentially uh, take a little break from Winfield Zoo or I don't really know yet. You'll see. <laughs> I haven't decided but um, but yeah so we're starting on the roof here like I said and you can see placing each of these individual pieces. It's not perfectly round and the spacing is not exact on all of these bars and yeah so it's it's good enough for now but I think I do want to go back and and really perfect it. So maybe on Sunday we will jump in and and do a Winfield Zoo uh, stream again and kind of fix this up and that way next week uh, we can get a new animal in the zoo. While we're finishing up the time lapse, I do want to mention to you guys, I announced it on my Twitter and in my Discord, but just in case you aren't on either of those places, I did recently start a second YouTube channel. Uh, the name is Simply Simming and it's going to be a channel dedicated to The Sims 4 speed builds and then moving on to, you know, potentially Sims 5 if it does come out and so on and so forth, but basically just a Sims channel. I really enjoy building houses in The Sims, but they never really did too well on this channel, so I decided to create a dedicated space where I could be creative with that game as well. So if you're interested in following that, um, subscribing to see any of that content, the link will be in the description below, and I have some dedicated socials for that account as well. So if that is something that interests you, I would love to see you over there. We only have one video up so far, but that's only because it just launched a couple days ago. Um, if you're seeing this video in the future, hopefully there are more videos over there by now. Um, anyway, we're going to finish up uh, just with some surrounding fences around this, and I end up removing uh, this. The, it ends up being three fences, right? So it's the actual cage, the taller fence, and then the littler fence on the outside. One, I don't think that was really needed, and two, the monkeys were kind of glitching through and and considering the outside fence as climbable, which is very annoying. I talk about it when we're all done, but anyway, we end up deleting that. So just finishing up some fencing and then doing a decorative 
negative little education board. And that's pretty much going to be it for the time lapse. Hopefully I didn't ramble too, too much. I am extremely exhausted. I dropped Matt off at a friend's house at 2.45 a.m. this morning because they are catching a flight to go to New Jersey for a cornhole tournament. Um, so I was up at like 2 a.m. or so, uh, drove him over there and then drove back and then I was wide awake and so I didn't end up going back to sleep until 4 a.m. or so and then I woke up at like 8 um, and I'm pretty exhausted. So hopefully I am, I'm making sense and coherent with my, uh, speaking and everything, but thank you guys for bearing with me and hanging out. And I hope you guys are enjoying the episode so far. Um, like I said, we're just going to build this little education, uh, board real quick and actually took me less time than I thought it was going to because we haven't even started yet. Um, but we're going to start it now. <laughs> Basically just taking an education board and making it pretty, um, theming it out to the habitat so it's not just a board that's placed on the side of the fence. Um, I wanted there to be like a little sign when you first walk up in this corner area. I made a little, um, like what are these called? Art shape signs for a speed build, the lion speed build, and it reminded me how much I like doing them. So this one comes out okay. It's nothing, you know, nothing super fancy or anything like that, but I like that it kind of gives a border and a little bit of detail to the education board to make it incorporated into the habitat with just some little theming. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So what I need from you guys, recommendation on next animals. Um, Arctic wolf, gray wolf is a suggestion as well as grizzly bear. Um, but if you have any other suggestions or one of those two or what you want to see, do let me know down in the comments below. And as soon as we finish up, up this little sign, get it placed. I'm going to throw some rocks all around it and then we'll get back to real time and make sure our monkeys are happy. And, uh, and that'll be it for the episode. So as I kind of, uh, waste time here in the last couple seconds of the time lapse, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to get back to real time right now. <sighs> I built longer than I thought I was going to, and this is going to be a much longer project than I originally anticipated because I'm not doing it with the uh, circular symmetry trick, as you saw in the time lapse. I was doing it by hand because I don't know. I I don't know. <laughs> But I'm happy with how it looks so far. I just noticed this is sticking out that I might have to fix that on either side. Maybe add a little bit of detail trim uh, on the roof. But anyway, we have our Japanese macaque habitat pretty much done. I won't talk about it too much just because we did in the time lapse, I'm assuming. I don't know. I haven't recorded it yet, but my plan is to talk about it in the time lapse. But what I first want to check because I forgot to check, is that if these little guys can even get inside... Oh, there are a lot of escape routes. Why? Oh, probably just because I haven't moved the barrier. Okay, cool. So they, ca oh, they can't get in there? They can? They can't? Oh, because the barrier's not there yet. Duh. So it's not actually... Um, counting it as their space. So let's edit the barrier now. And can I, I'm gonna have to go inside the building here. I should have done this before I built the roof, but I'm not that smart, so I didn't do that. Uh, let's please add, thank you. Um, this idea actually came from the comment section on the video of last week is I was worried about the habitat being a little bit small and you guys suggested that adding an indoor area where they could, you know, go inside and sleep would both satisfy their hard shelter as well as their need for more space. And I clearly think that that is a phenomenal idea. So that's where this came from. Let's just delete this and delete that one. And hopefully if we then click on our little monkeys here, play, this should, yes, they can go inside. Beautiful. Um. I'm a little irritated that it looks like they can climb on this fence. Um, I'm thinking that is because this fence here I made go into the building. So let me just see here if I delete all of these, if that just fixes it because 
We don't want them to escape. Can I click on you again, please? Hello? Perfect, there we go. Uh, that did not fix the problem because somehow, God, somehow you can still get on that. I really, uh, anyway, the climbing mechanics of the animals. Does that fix it? Mm, no, somehow you can still, somehow you can still climb on that. Okay, you know what? It's gone. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to get rid of it. And that's fine because we still have a fence on the uh, inside. So let me see if I just get rid of all of this. At what point can we make it so the monkeys... And did one already escape? Really? Is this, is this a Japanese macaque? Can you get out of this menu, please? It is. My goodness. Like two seconds. Two seconds. And they see the opportunity. But anyway, this is really frustrating. I wish there was a mechanic that they can somehow make it. Can I have these pieces, please? Actually, you know what? Let me do this. This is probably easier. In fact, I know this is easier because these fences are much easier to click on. I wish there was a mechanic that if the climbing pieces are not in the habitat, they don't count as being climbable. You know what I mean? So like... The wooden pieces can be climbable when they're actually in the habitat. And then when they're not, then the animals don't recognize them as part of their, their territory, part of their space, and they won't attempt to climb on them at all. I wish there was some way that we could implement that. Let's see. That still says an escape, but that might... That might just be a barrier thing. Did I... Oh, did it update and I clicked away too fast? Yeah. Okay, cool. So they can go, they can go inside their little building right here and they can uh, get some hard shelter, some more climbing space. Let me check. I clicked away from it. Social group, uh, they probably need a little bit more, but they have 100% space and 100% hard shelter, which is fantastic. Let's get out of this view. I love this little interior space. And by the way, this is as much as we're doing on the interior. You guys know how much I dislike interiors. Uh, so this we will not be working on anymore. <laughs> we'll be doing a little bit more detail to the outside potentially, especially now that I had to remove the secondary fence. Although with this one, it's not quite like that one, right? So this is one fence, two fence. So really, I don't even think we really even needed the outside fence. So I think I'm okay just keeping this one. What are we getting alerts for? Animal has escaped. Oh, well, you're getting transported back right now. So everything is fine. Everything will be okay. Alpine Ibex is about to mature. Uh, staff are having to queue for the uh, research center. That's fine. Um, can we look and see vet research complete? It is lots of stuff. Okay, cool. Awesome. So we are doing pretty well. Wow, this is a traffic jam. I even used wider paths than I thought I was going to have to use in this one. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it just so stuff stops happening. Hello, vet research, more, goodness gracious. Great, awesome, perfect. So yeah, you guys, that is, uh, that's today's episode. Um, this is done-ish for now, to be honest. I'm going to take a break on this because this uh, was pretty tedious. And in order to do the rest of this, is going to be a pretty long process. Um, and I kind of burned myself out on this just a little bit. So that is our Japanese macaque habitat as it is right now. Thinking maybe we can add another animal, kind of over make it come around this way and that way and make it kind of pretend share this building kind of thing, you know? Um, so let me know what you think that animal might be. If you did enjoy the video, leaving a like down below really does help me out and I greatly do appreciate it. Of course, hitting that subscribe button will make sure you don't miss out on any future content. And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!